this is Deanne. Welcome to another video. Today we're doing chapter four of Permacraft Retribution. <laughs> and uh, in the Chronicle story, we are looking at the perspective of Sam. I mean, it's all in the title of the video, so I shouldn't need to repeat that, but like, yeah, like, it's pretty clear. Like, if you're in the middle of the story and you haven't read the other parts, you should probably do that. There is a playlist on the description where you can look at that if you are curious. But if you just want to chill and just listen to a part of a story, well, by all means, stick around and listen. I, I, I'm fine with that. I don't need to repeat the title. <laughs> but yeah. Let's get to it. Chapter 4. Oh yeah, this is a flashback. So like before the events of Anti-Hero, like, or during the events of Anti-Hero, this is going on. So this is in the midst of a flashback, but I, I might as well point that out, but... <laughs> I mean, if you read last chapter, you already know that this chapter, we're still in that flashback. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's get going. <sighs> Sam pushed the remainders, uh, remainder of the clutter off the kitchen counter, organizing it in the chest nearby, returning any items that needed to go back into the fridge when he heard a door open. He looked up, seeing Sam walking into the living room, looking around before spotting the boy. You're not busy, are you? The cat managed a weak smile. No, just finishing up. Sam brushed himself off. What's going on? It's about Leah, the cat replied. Boy, The boy's heart sank and Sam nodded reluctantly. There are some friends who want to see you. Yeah? Sam looked up at the cat, meeting his green eyes. I I guess they wanted to know if you wanted to come back for him. To come look for him. The cat smiled hopefully. Here? The boy's eyes widened. Her friend seems to think so, the cat replied. I came to my front door to find Impulse and Vita along with Lizzie and Stacy waiting for me with their protectors. Impulse has been trying to figure out where Jem is and believes you that uh, believes she might be here. Wait, what do you mean? Sam frowned. Jem was captured earlier today in an attack on our base, the cat reported, fidgeting nervously before stepping into the kitchen. They need our help, Sam nodded. You know I won't turn down a chance to help, even if Liam isn't there. Campbell's not a nice guy, the cat smiled again. I have a feeling he will be there. What they told me made sense. Campbell would want to keep an eye on you, in case what he wants with Liam isn't enough. Sam shook his head. He wants to take everything, Stampy. He won't stop at hurting Liam, you know that. The cat looked down at his feet. Why we wanted to leave the choice up to you. I really don't want to put you in danger. But if that's what you want to do, I'll do my part to help. Oh, Stampy. Sam crossed the room, giving the cat a hug. You did not have to say that. Stampy chuckled. I'd rather know where you are and that you're safe. No matter what you choose. I'm going. My brother needs me. Sam pulled away, standing tall hoping it gave off the confidence he desired. <laughs> Can't save him, Samuel. The voice taunted in his mind, like a distorted record. He pushed the wasal aside. He couldn't let this guy get under skin. He would prove him wrong. I'll be with you every step of the way, the cat smiled, just like you did with me and Nettie. Sam nodded. Although, it would have been better if you hadn't gotten separated from Martin that time. The cat laughed. It all turned out good in the end, so I don't think that's big of a deal now. But no, we won't get separated. Sam chuckled. You can't promise that either, Stampy Cat. Sure I can, Stampy said proudly, with a mischievous grin, gesturing toward the door. Now come on, I still need to drop by the doghouse and get a dog so we can find Jem. And, hopefully, your brother. Sam knelt beside the unconscious girl on the ground, checking to make sure that there were no bruises forming or bleeding from her dark autumn hair. Satisfied to know that the girl was unharmed, he gently shook her by the shoulders. She groaned in protest, but the boy didn't relent. Come on, Caitlin, I need you to wake up, Sam said firmly, glance, glancing back over to the door warily. Could he hear footsteps coming his, this way? He listened carefully, hearing the sound of the teenage girl's soft breathing. breathing. Finally, a shadow formed in the door at the cell clicked. Cell door clicked, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Dave cautiously stood cautiously stood to his feet, knowing he didn't have a weapon to fight with. That didn't mean he was a sorry. <laughs> Before the young man could step into the room, Sam lunged, tackling him to the ground with a thud. The boy beneath him groaned as Sam quickly knocked him out cold, pulling out some spare rope he had as he bound the boy's wrist behind him. He recognized the boy's face as Sam found. What was Julius doing here? Where were his friends? What was Campbell doing to them? He got to his feet when he heard a groan behind him. Sam? Caitlin's voice asked as the boy turned to face her. She rubbed her head gingerly, but wore a curious smile before it slipped away. Where is everyone? They were taken to see Campbell. Sam offered her a hand. We have to help them, Caitlin insisted, getting to her feet. Without Sam's help, as the young man smiled. Liam's in no shape to help anyone right now. We can't leave him here, Sam pointed out, nodding toward his brother. Nor would I like to leave him alone with that kid, either. Caitlin nodded, her eyes folding on the unconscious Julius on the floor. We can't just... Sam? Caitlin? A voice called from down the hallway. Sam's eyes widened at the same time as Caitlin's. Tango, we're in here! Caitlin ran over to the cell door, shoving it open the rest of the way, as the hermit and Tyler appeared. How are things here? Tango grinned, looking her up and down before seeing Sam. We're okay, Sam replied before turning to Liam. Well, mostly. You need to get him back to the base, Tyler Frank was concerned. That was my plan, Sam replied, walking over to his brother, seeing his horrible burns and cuts blistering his brother's arms, chest, and part of his face. What about the others? Caitlin demanded. We can't just leave them here. We're not, Tango replied, lifting his chin. Impulse called for backup, and backup is here. Sam's eyes lit up. What do you mean by backup? I've got some friends who decided to tag along once they knew a certain family member was in proximity. Tango winked. The boy's smile widened. Tango, you're a genius. Sam shook his head in amazement. Sorry, that's reserved for Impulse. He's the one who initiated it. Tango laughed. Although I do appreciate that. <laughs> Get upstairs. Fluffy can lead you back. You'll be safe? Caitlin asked reluctantly, looking over at Julius, barely. We'll be fine, Dango replied. Back before you know it. I'll make sure of it, Tyler reassured the girl, as Sam stepped up to stand beside her. Sam will probably need help with you, your new medic skills anyway. I hear they're good. If you promise, Caitlin crossed her arms with a smile. I promise, Tango stated before glaring at Julius. Don't worry about him. We'll come back for him later. Okay, Caitlin ran out into the hall. Sam following right behind her, carrying his brother in his arms. Thanks again, Tango. Sam followed the girl until they made it back out to the back in front of the portal. Sure enough, Fluffy was waiting for them, her fluffy tail wagging with excitement. Sam heard his brother groan softly as they pulled him closer, seeing the fa his face in the sunlight piercing through the trees. He'd done it. He had found his brother. He'd rescued him. He had helped think of the item told him it was a fright. Let's move on to chapter five. I say it's fine. It's short enough that we can go into chapter five. <laughs> Sam carried his brother into the living room, barely noticing Stacy and Haley setting up the main room with beds. He went into the room, finding a spare bed on the left side of the television, with one on the other side as well. The blankets were already pulled back, as if beckoning for him to place Liam down on their, into their Fluffy covers. He heard a bark at his heels as he looked down to see Fluffy looking up at him, her deep caramel, caramel eyes meeting his gaze as she stuck out her tongue. He glanced, placed Liam down on the bed gently before bending to give Fluffy a good scratch behind the ear. Thank you so much for the help, girl, Sam said with a smile. What is with you and Sam be talking to dogs? Caitlin amused with a giggle. They can understand us. Sam stood straight. Stacy does it too with her wolves. Mm. What have I walked into? Mm. Caitlin groaned, but still smiled as she grabbed the shulker box from her bucket. Mm. Are you good with me helping bandage, helping bandage him up? Mm. I'd be happy to have a hand. Mm. Sam nodded gently. Mm. What is that noise? Trying to figure it out if that's 
my head or not? Probably it's not. Whatever. It's probably in my head. <laughs> Sam nodded, gently propping his brother up. Seeing him, some of the cuts were still bleeding, as if they were fresh. What had he done to his younger brother? Caitlin's bright, eyes brightened as she ran to, the, to his side, putting down the box. Fluffy, you can guard the door if you like. Look at you! Sam teased with a lopsided smile as Fluffy bounded off. It's actually two doors, one for this room and one for the kitchen. Really? She tilted her head. Sam nodded. She chuckled, pulling out some bandages. Do you want to bandage him while I hold him up? Are you sure? She frowned. He's your brother. Uh, it's good practice, Sam smiled. Trust me, if you go to the school, you'll teach you the same thing. She nodded as Sam propped Liam up as she went to work. Sam watched, doing his best to make it as easy as possible for her until his brother's injuries were covered. Sam gently lowered Liam's head back onto the pillow, his bright red curls floating limply onto the white pillow. Both won't leave scars, will they? Caitlin frowned, looking down at the boy's partially bandaged face. I think they make him look cool. Sam nudged him playfully. He didn't have the healing factor like our friend, so it won't heal as efficiently or effectively. Oh, she shook her head. Can we at least take care of the pain? Yeah, we could do that. Sam assured her. It does help a lot. I wouldn't help. Right, because you have to protect your friends all the time, she teased. Yeah, Sam nodded, rubbing the underside of his chin gingerly with a grin. Caitlin grabbed the bottle of healing as she gently gave it to, the, her, to his brother. Sam could see the pain fade from his brother's face as he let out a relief sigh. <sighs> it kind of reminds me of when she was did Scar, Caitlin admits, looking over at the boy. He was covered in cuts and burns. Now he has scars on his body too. Watch at his face. They don't hurt, do they? Sam frowned. He told me it just felt uncomfortable. She smiled weakly. Not sure if he's underselling it, so I don't worry. Sam chuckled. Adults do that a lot, don't they? Aren't you an adult? She teased with a smirk. Sam nodded. Got that right. Liam's getting pretty close, too. He'll be 17 in a few months. Well, Caitlin whispered, finally turning away from the boy. I think I'm going to go wait by the front door for the others to return. Give me a holler if you need me. Okay, Caitlin. Sam watched her head for the door. Call me Kate, she shouted back at, as she waved, disappearing down the hall a moment later as Sam juggled. He watched her go, taking out his communicator from his pocket as he stored it on a nightstand beside the second bed. Before he could sit down on the bed, though, he heard another pair of footsteps. He looked up to see another girl appear in the doorway. Haley was about Liam's age, he guessed as he smiled at it. As she smiled at him. Apologies. How is he doing? I noticed you brought him in earlier. He's steady. Sam nodded, stepping aside so she could get a better look. Haley walked up to where Liam was lying. She checked him over. I'm expecting bed rest for a few weeks at the minim minimum. Yeah. Haley nodded, her head slowly. Sad looking her eye on her face. What happened with? That's what I want to know. Sam frowned brushing aside a piece of red curl from his brother's face. He hasn't woken up yet. Haley nodded. I'll have to talk to Jem to see if she can give me somewhat of a timeline. I had a talk with Stacy earlier. She wanted me to stay here to look after Liam while he recovers. She knows how busy it could be for you, having to keep an eye on two YouTubers. Maybe you'll even let me join your team? Honestly, if you want to, I don't think Vampy would mind. Sam shrugged. It's just, I'm not sure what I want to do once Liam gets better. She admitted, Caitlin's pretty cool. She is like a ray of sun sunshine on a rainy day. And Sam mused, you like today's rainy day? Haley raised an eyebrow. A little bit, Sam shrugged. At least I have a break of sunshine right now. Knowing Sam, Liam's safe, hanging out with friends, you know? Not worrying about what Campbell will when Campbell will retaliate. Will he retaliate? She asked. Campbell wants to take everything that Rose cares about, or anyone she loves. He replied. Take it all for her, just like you think she did to him. Oh, Haley replied with a nod. Does that keep you up at night, knowing that? Sam shrugged. I've had to deal with worse, especially being a friend to someone accused of being a traitor. 
She smiled at that. You're tough. I like that about you. Thanks, Sam replied, looking down at his shoes. I should probably see how the others are doing. Are you okay keeping watch here? Of course, Haley assured him. I'm here to lessen the load, Sam. Sam smiled at her again, heading for the door. He found the others waiting for him as he gave his friends a wave. This really was a ray of sunshine on a rainy day. <laughs> Sam trudged into the living room later that night, seeing Haley look up from the couch, a book in her hand, and she smiled it. My shift is done, I guess, sir? Yeah, Stacy and Lizzie are heading out. They wanted to give you a chance to say goodbye for now, obviously. He nodded as she stood. So we're all good? She asked, hopefully. No ambush? Apparently not, Sam shrugged. Silence is a great, but it's only been like a few hours. Right, she chuckled. Sam stepped aside as she walked out the door. Try to get some sleep, Sam. You look tired. I'll try, Sam nodded as he closed the door uh, as she closed the door behind him. Sam watched her disappear as he turned toward his brother. Liam was still sound asleep, looking peaceful, even with the few bandages that covered his face. Sam walked over to the medical kit Kate had left behind, rummaging through it to make sure he had what he needed. He nearly jumped out of his skin when he heard the communicator on the nightstand explode into a ray of intense buzzing. Sam, and the boy frowned, walking over to it as he picked it up, eternally groaning when he saw the caller. He walked it in the kitchen, pressed the signal, deciding to get it over with. What do you want? What do you mean, what do I want? The man replied on the other end. A mocking, in a mocking tone. How's your mission to finding your brother? I found him, Sam said defiantly. Did you now? The man gasped in disbelief. Are you sure? What do you want from me? Sam said sternly. You can make all the threats you want, but you're not going to hurt me or my friends. The man tisked out the boy, Sam imagining him shaking his head. What does the man even look like? He couldn't even be sure what he sounded like. His voice was so distorted. I'm not the one threatening you. You're my friend. I'm only telling you the truth. Friends don't berate each other or judge each other for the pettiest of things, Sam pointed out. Okay, maybe they don't, the man whined. But still, I did tell you that your brother was in danger, didn't I? And you told me I couldn't find or even save him. Well, that's exactly what I did, Sam raised an eyebrow. You're sounding a lot like your aunt, Samuel, the man sighed, sounding disappointed. So sure of yourself. So sure that nothing can take you down. You don't get it, do you? Sam snapped. I've made mistakes before. I've failed to protect my charge before. But that didn't stop me from trying. That's the same way with my aunt. Ah, so you admit you're a failure. The man chuckled. That is not what I said. Sam growled at the man. You knew it. Samuel, Samuel. You don't even have a clue, do you? The man taunted. You know Campbell won't stop until he gets what he wants. Do you think here saving your brother was the right thing to do? What do you mean by that? The boy demanded. You can't save everyone, Samuel. The man chuckled. Campbell has plans, you know. Plans that may bring you to your knees. Then you'll wish you left your brother to suffer. I wouldn't wish torture on anyone, Sam stated matter-of-factly. Not after what Julius did to my brother. Oh, but it was only following orders. Just as you are, the man mused. You blindly follow your aunt into doing whatever she wants you to do, not realizing the pain it'll cause you and those around you. My aunt knows what she's doing. Besides, I chose to find my brother, Sam pointed out. I could have stayed here and helped prepare for a potential attack, but I chose to come back because I knew I needed to be there. If Campbell wanted me dead, I doubt he would have been there. Wouldn't have. I doubt he would have been there when you found him. The man mused. I guess you would have killed him, killed him right in front of you if your friends had to rescue you. Onions filled the boy as he took a slow, shallow breath. You don't know what you're talking about. Campbell wants to make a point. Killing your brother in front of you would seal the deal, wouldn't it? The man chuckled. Of course, it's only the beginning. Campbell has plans for you, Samuel. Far worse than what a mere assassin can do to you. The call ended before Sam could retort as he stood alone in the kitchen. Shaken by what the man had said. Was he right? He knew Jem had unwillingly led them to a trap. Trying to warn a stubborn impulse. No doubt Campbell could have easily dealt with the two brothers after the YouTubers. 
Unfortunately, that didn't happen. Sam put a head in, hand in his face, sliding it down. A hand to his face, sliding it down, and he let out a sigh. So what was Campbell going to do now? Would he try to attack them? Would Campbell try to sneak in to hurt Liam? He couldn't let that happen. He wouldn't allow it. Gritting his teeth, he went back into the living room, tossing the communicator onto the nightstand before pulling back the covers. He climbed into bed, lying down, wanting desperately to close his eyes and forget everything that had happened over the last couple of days. Yet, he still couldn't get the man's voice out of his head. Who was this man? And how did he know so much about what Campbell was planning? That's going to be the end of those couple of chapters. I will see you guys in the next one. Um, next part, whenever that might be. Thank you guys so much for watching.